So, welcome to our next uh, tutorial. We're gonna do a quick show of how to move cards around the board. Um, so we're gonna play against the machine. Uh, so you simply can play PvP match or machine here. Uh, playing against the machine, we're gonna go ahead and set a, a default deck. The game, once loaded, basically you're gonna see you versus the machine or a player. And my, I was going to show you how to switch out cards, but I wouldn't te technically switch these cards since I drew both legendaries and my favorite epic card. But you can select up to two cards and replace them. But I'm going to keep these. So now the game begins, and the objective of the game is to move more points to your side of the board than the opponent has by the end of the game. Ally row, as you can see, is locked, and the other rows can be attacked, moved, and adjusted as you go throughout the game. So this is a really good starting point for me, so I hope, oh, and I have the choice. The first thing that happened is I, I got a 14, he got a five, which gives me the option to choose first. If I go first, then he's gonna get the last play. But what I wanna do is make sure the board it looks good for me. And right now I like the board because of the cards I have here. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go first. So the first thing we are gonna uh, look at is how do you move a card? Well, each card has a different movement value. It affects other cards. If I take this card, one red card, the seven, would move to the recruit row, one movement. So when you see a plus one, that means one row. If you see a negative two, that means two rows the other direction. So right now, in looking at this, if I took the nine, I'd have to move the seven towards him, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and take the, uh, let's go ahead and take this seven. No, no, this seven. You drag and drop, you'll see it starts in Loyalist. You can tell that by the actual cards themselves. It says Loyalist, it's also kind of got a silver uh, front to it. Now I'm gonna play a faction card. All you do is you look and you read the factions. Each card is gonna tell you something different. Phobia is a round effect. Place face up in round effect, add 18 points to one card on the board. So Phobia, you would drag, you would simply drop the card. He has a round effect, so he's gonna be placed on the board for at least one round, this particular card is then it's going to allow you to select a card. This is it goes straight to the allies. So by selecting this card, I know on my next move that this card is gonna be worth 20, uh, 20 something points, 25, and it's gonna then protect it for one round so I can take it in the next round. Very good strategic play. So the opponent would make his moves. By taking that, he'll have to take the three because I protected the red card. And there are no browns, so he doesn't have to send any in my direction. So basically, the first thing is understanding the movements. Movements are really easy. Now he's gonna steal my seven because he can take up to two loyalists and he takes mine, but he's gonna have to send me the 15. So it's a really a, a, a poor move by the AI. So now I'm up and that's he's gonna take that on the next one, but let's go forward with this. So of course I need to take this 25 or he will. So I'm gonna take that to my allies. That means I have to bank the seven and I have to move the five back one again because a negative one green, move that back to here, and then I'm gonna have to move this plus one, which is good for me. Then I drew a faction card. Now why do I get a faction card and why do I get to play a faction card? On each card, you'll see a few symbols, the movements, but you'll also see a faction icon. That icon, the helmet at the top, tells me that if I take this card as my starting card, I will be able to play a faction. So. Because of that, I'll go ahead and play the Grim Order, which is another round effect card, who is going to put two cards and triple and double the values of those two cards. So that triples, and then it's gonna double the second one, and then randomly protect one of those two cards. Again, it's a round effect, and it's gonna stay on the board till the next round. The other thing besides the faction is also, as you see on that card, there's a little icon that shows a community character. That means a new card, that seven, was added to the board because that, communi that community character was moved out. So again, let's do that and just show you that. So if I was to take this community, this card here, he's gonna go to recruits, he's gonna move a green and a blue towards me, but also draw two new cards because those little icons down below there. So if I take him, I'll move this, I'll move this up one. Now two new cards are going to come onto the board as well as the end of turn card. At the end of every turn, a new card is added. So I actually had three cards because I moved this had a movement, or this, this had a community draw, and these had community draws. <coughs> 
And that is not the only thing we're going to learn. We got one more thing to learn. He's going to now kill a green and a blue. So he decided to use his kill card to kill that and that, and that puts me down to 39 points. So now it's my turn again. Looking at the board, this is the only available faction card. So I'm going to play it. That lets me take that 12 and bank it. There were no blues. I didn't have to move any back. So now I'm going to I'm going to choose a lasting effect. The icon at the top with a sword through the shield is a lasting effect. These cards can be placed on the row in this lasting effect icon down below. I place this card on the row. A card comes out and is placed below that. This 13 just represents a gray card, and if a gray card is placed into that row, the lasting effect will kill a card in the opposing row. So on my next turn, my objective is to try to for this to show this card is to get a gray card into that row. And we can actually do that. So let's go ahead and move the one here up, which is going to allow us to move a gray, a gray into that row and move a red into that row. But the gray card is going to trigger that effect and kill the highest card in his row. And so that is a great way to effectively um, use these tools, these, these machines, if you will, to attack the uh, opponent across the board. The same applies for things like a plus five, minus five, adding points or detracting points from the row, which I'll do one time here and show you how that's done. Uh, but first, the opponent always gets to play. We're already into round five. So let's see what uh, he decides to throw at me, or it decides to throw at me. Okay, it's going to kill my seven with a kill and restore, and then randomly access <coughs> the afterlife, which then will randomly give him a card that has been killed. So the afterlife is where cards go to be killed, and these are the areas in which your discarded faction plays have been. So now it's my turn. I have the ability again to take a faction. I will go ahead and do so. I will take the five and remove his two. I'll move these cards back and I'll move this three, negative three out. But now I have the ability to pl put a plus five, minus five card down. I'm going to do it right here on this row. Now, as you see, both the red cards in that row, red and black, are going to have negative five points attached to them. So now I have two lasting effects on the board, and you can see that uh, you know we've we've got a close game, but he's got a little bit of a lead. Uh, and then you play this out all the way to round eight. So I'm almost done. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to we're going to finish out this game. See if I can come back and win, <clears throat> showing you that you can always come back in the game. So first, I of course want to move the gray onto that card there. I want to move this one back because I don't. I don't want to move the 9 because I want to keep higher cards there. I'll take his 10 out. That will allow me to kill that 9 with that gray black mirror or uh, blade storm. Now I have a chance to do another play. So I'm going to play another legendary white streak. And this is going to allow me to select cards and add a random amount of points to those cards. I have three cards in my loyalist. So we're going to randomly add points to him. That's a great card. And to this one, randomly add points there. Got a good result there and randomly add points to there. Not so good result on that one. So now we're, he's, he's got the slight advantage going second. So let's see what he does. He's gonna take that 17 out from me, but that shouldn't hurt me. Too bad. All right, so now the 17 is still there. I can move it. I'm gonna take this too. So this shows you the power of moving, just moving cards. So by moving that, I can move the 17, I can move the 2, but I can also take this 10. And so I've got a lot of points. So it's going to put a lot of pressure on him to come back from 113 to 71 to see if he can beat me. Now let's see what he does. So he's, going to, he's basically going to reverse everything I just did, which will not get him the win. He'll take the 4 instead of the 2, he'll remove the 10, and I will slightly come out ahead by nine points and win the game. So I was able to come back in just a couple rounds and beat the AI. At the end of each game, there is a victory screen. The victory will tell you the final score, also how much ex experience you earned, as well as additional credits just added for beating the AI. And once you're done, you have learned how to play Master of Wills.